What's up everybody? Welcome back to Old Folks TV. I think today's the day. <laughs> I think we're almost there. We are so close to having this car running. Uh, all I gotta do is put the carbs on. We got the new gaskets uh, for those super flow heads, those crazy heads. Uh, we've got to put the carbs on, which means we get to use those Weber windows that we put in. Oh my God, I'm so excited. And uh, we're going to get the carbs on, get them tightened up, finish the fuel system. I put the fuel pump in without you guys because, man, I just got to get this thing done. I can't film everything. I'll put some pictures right here. How about that? Uh, so we need to put a little piece of fuel line from the frame to the motor. Put the cross piece over with the T. Uh, bolt down the driver's side carb. I already did the passenger side one just to make sure I could actually reach them. Uh, so put this driver's side carb on. Uh, I got to find a battery to put in this thing. We already did the ignition switch. Uh, I think I've got the wiring sorted out and the starter is wired up. So we're there. Uh, we're just going to hook up a fuel can, get her running and get her tuned up. Fingers crossed. Let's get this car up in the air. Well, it's not magic. <laughs> it's amazing, but it's not magic. We got our hands on something super cool. This is the Quick Jack TL5000 hydraulic lift. Boy, is it cool. After seeing Tony out there, you know, having his lift in his garage and being able to put his bus up in the attic, I was in love. I had to have one. I don't have room for one like that, and I'm not gonna cut up my garage to you know, be able to get up that high and, and put a two post lift. I don't have room for that. But this one is super kick ass because it's portable. You can hang it on the wall. You can take it anywhere you want. It's really not that heavy for what it is. It supports 5,000 pounds, which is like a new car. I could lift up the Tiguan and change the oil if I wanted to. Probably not though. <laughs> but it, it picks the bug up like there's no, like there's nothing there. It'll do a bus. It'll do pretty much anything. This particular size fits right between the wheels, which is super cool. It's just right. It grabs it by the, the pan uh, or the frame, not necessarily by the jack point. So you don't have to worry about it, you know, rusting away and falling apart. Uh, it goes up pretty high. I was actually, I've had it for a little while and I was actually able to get the motor in uh, the yellow car with it. It got that high. Just slide that thing right underneath, lower the car a little bit, do some adjustments and we had it, uh, so that's rad. Uh, you can get underneath it, it's super safe. It's got a mechanical lock, so it can't come down on you. Uh, you just release the pressure and they hit these little stoppers. Pretty cool. It's, it's really small, this is the whole thing. Um, you know, it's a little hydraulic pump, holds about two quarts of fluid. You got your professional up and down dongle. Uh, it runs on 120, regular wall voltage. They do have a 241, but I didn't get that one because I don't have that power, but this will run off of a generator even. Like if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you wanted to have this. Uh, the hydraulic lines just pop off the ones that are on there, so they're out of the way while you're working. Pretty cool and very affordable, actually. Uh, I picked it up on Amazon. It was like 1500 bucks, which is not terrible. It's, you know, more than a jack, but... Uh, it's far more versatile. It picks the whole car up straight. Putting the motor in, you're putting the motor in straight, not at an angle. That's cool. It makes it so much easier. I can get all the wheels off. I can do all the brakes. I can pretty much work on everything on this car just with this lift in place. And it'll hold it up, you know, indefinitely once you put it on the stoppers. It's super solid. Uh, I don't feel like the car is going to fall down on me. I did the exhaust with it on there too, which was usually that's a pain in the ass, but... Super cool, man. Quick Jack TL5000. I'll put a link down below. Game changer. Got some new lights in here. Got this jack in here. Got a little bit more room in here. This is awesome. All right, we got the wheel off. Super easy because of this super cool jack <laughs> holds everything up man just so high it's amazing 
It, I love it. It's so great. You guys got to get one. It's the best. Uh, so we got, you know, our new brakes right here. And then we got our Weber windows, which we'll take this off. See if we can't squeeze that giant carb in there. Um, it, it's tight. It's super tight. There's not a lot of room. Um, this motor is just enormous and it's caused so many problems for me. But uh, it's in. Um, I'm going to see if I can get that carb in there. Let's get this Weber window off and we'll, uh, we'll get to work. Man, would you look at that. Look at all that room. We got wiring we don't need. We got wiring we do need. We got access to the spark plugs. We got access to the uh, the mounting for the carb or the intake, you know, the head right there. This one's got those three stupid bolts because it's a big ass super flow head. You know, but it is nice. I can get in there and, and you'll see, I can adjust the carbs like I need to. You know, we can bolt it down, we can change the spark plugs, but with these stupid heads, you have to pull the intake off to get the spark plugs out. That's a real pain. Uh, but, but you can see, and we even have access back here to the fourth bolt uh, that we can get to from the side rather than the top. That makes putting the motor in really easy. So let me grab that carb and we'll see if we can stab it in there and hopefully it goes in easy. All right, here we go. Oh my God, that's so much easier than the other side. <laughs> the driver's side was tight, like way too tight. That's not good. This one seems to be a little better. Yikes. Oh my God, it's way over there. I don't know if I can get these on. I'm using these little 11 millimeter space saver nuts, just so I can get a socket on there. And I did put the new gasket on already. Holy moly. With regular intakes, this probably wouldn't be so bad. Boy, that was luck. That one was luck. Okay, now, get in here. That beats the heck out of fighting it. You know, fighting it from in here, trying to reach in there and get it. Having that 36 horse shroud on there also uh, really helps because you get a lot more room, you know, in there. So you're not banging into it. So that'll be nice. And now you can see how easy it's going to be to adjust this carb, you know, because I have access to the screws so easy. Just jack it up, take the wheels off and take the covers off. I got it. Everything's within reach. It's super nice. Weber windows. 
All right, now we got to get that fuel line over to uh, hook it up to the T. You know, I bought obviously extra just because you don't want to have it to be too tight. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and cut it. This is uh, ethanol safe, you know, newer rubber fuel lines. Always want to replace all your fuel lines uh, whenever you're back there messing with it. And there we go. I'm going to put a hose clamp on that and then we got to run one down and then we got to make then we got to make the metal line that comes up from the pan you know that goes through. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that right now. All right. So we got the fuel line crossing the carbs and we got the fuel line from the tank back all blown out. But in between you've got a metal line. You got one that comes up out of the pan. And then you put a little piece of rubber on it and then you got the metal one that goes up to the back of the motor through the firewall and then that connects to another little piece of rubber that connects to the T. Uh, so what I've got here is some cheapo AutoZone brake line and we're just going to cut it up and bend it. Slide the rubber on. It's that easy. Here we got our our little tubing cutter. You know you just kind of give her a little twist on the knob there and, and run it around the outside of the, the pipe. I kind of eyeballed it. Uh, we just need to cut off a few inches here and then we'll have room to make our make our bends and if we come up a little short we'll just make the rubber piece either a little longer or a little shorter depending on uh, you know what we end up with. There we go. We definitely don't need those. Uh, we are going to put a flare on it because the flare is going to keep the hose from popping off. So we'll use our little flare tool uh, once we figure out the length and everything. But let's get underneath the car and I'll show you where, where it connects to on the body and then we'll, we'll make our little hand bends to get it where we want it. Uh, and then we'll work on, on cleaning up this top end and, and putting a flare on it. Get underneath that car. All right, here is the fuel pipe coming out of the transmission frame horn. This runs through the, I guess it runs through the tunnel all the way out and then it pops out in the, in the front where the, like the brake master is and everything. And that's where we hooked up our electric fuel pump. And then this goes up through the firewall over here, but you don't want to just run a, a rubber one up there because it's going to rub on your metal and it's going to get leaky. So we got our little hose and I like to put this down just kind of all the way down over that thing uh, just insurance that it's not going to slip off or leak. Then you give your hose clamp a little room to uh, you know not right on the edge of the hose. And that's nice and snug on there. We've got the flared end of our American style brake line. And then that hose oh, clamp. And then that's going to go on there. That flare is going to help keep, uh, keep it on. Push that on. And then as long as the hose clamp is on the other side of that flare, you know, that's not going to pop off. I don't like how straight, you know, that's super straight up there. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a, a bend and then we're going to have to trim off a little more inside the, the engine bay uh, just to get it right exactly where we want it. So we'll end up cutting it. And then once we're inside the engine bay, that's where the second piece of rubber comes into play just like this, but it goes to the T on the carbs. So. We're not going to connect this right now because we just need to mark it so we know where to cut it inside, which we'll do right now.
there we go. Fuel line hooked up. Uh, I went ahead and did the linkage too when you weren't looking. Now we got our linkage done. We got our throttle cable fixed and hooked up. It was a little too short, but I had the little, uh, the adapter that lets it uh, get you know, a little bit longer just to hit that. We've got full throttle at the pedal. That's pretty good. Uh, everything else seems to be all right. I got found my wires. I got my wires hooked up and uh, got to check the timing again because we had to pull that out to get it in the car. Uh, belt tension is good. I got to do breather lines. Uh, coming up from the heads back there and, and somehow connect them to underneath here, although I may try and do them at the top. I don't know. Still a work in progress on that one. And uh, I think that's it. Motor's hooked up, fuel's hooked up. Uh, gear oil, I gotta put gear oil in that transmission and put a battery in it and that should be it. And then this thing should start, it should, it should start. I don't know. The wiring is super crusty in that thing and I don't know. <laughs> Uh, clean it up as much as I could. I think I think we got it. I think we're gonna be okay as soon as he brings us a battery uh, So that's it. That's what's gonna do it for this week. So much excitement A crazy lift in the garage that I've always wanted done working. That's pretty cool car Much closer to being put together uh, Just a few little things, you know to tighten up. Uh, hopefully we get to start this thing next weekend uh, And then we can get it the heck out of here. I'm not doing the taillight wiring any of that other stuff it's all messed up but i told him this time we're just going to get it running and that's it uh if he needs me to fix the wiring or whatever it's going to have to come back because i gotta get bobby's car in here uh that guy's been waiting patiently forever so let's go get it uh next weekend get it running and everything uh hit the links visit all the friends get you a t-shirt coffee mug hoodie whatever you want from our store down below hit the amazon store uh ooh. Hit that subscribe button. It's around here somewhere. Hit that subscribe button. Leave me comments. Thanks for watching. See you next week.